am Dr. Tracy and I'm going to talk about CPR in dogs. I hope that you never have to do CPR on your pet, but if you have to, I want you just to know the basics. And um, it's very similar to human CPR. So the first things we have to remember are A, B, C. A is for airway, B is for breathing, and C is for compressions. So the first thing we have to decide is if your dog needs CPR. So this is Wrigley. He is sedated for neuter, so he is very much alive. I'm not gonna do CPR on him. I'm just gonna use him as a demonstration. I promise he's okay. So if you find your dog and they are laying there unconscious, the first thing you wanna do is see if they are really unconscious. Wrigley, Wrigley, are you okay? Are you okay, buddy? Okay, pretend like he's unconscious. The next thing you're gonna do is check his airway. You do this um, by pulling on the tongue and looking to see that there's not something in there. A stick, leaves, a toy. If there is something, you can sweep with your finger, um, just like I am. Remember, your dog's unconscious, <laughs> so Wrigley's sedated. So that's the A in airway. B is breathing, are they breathing? The best way to tell if your pet is breathing is to watch their chest move up and down. You can put your hand there or you can just watch. Now, Wrigley is breathing just fine, but if he weren't, the next thing we would do after breathing is compression. So there's a different spot to do chest compressions, <clears throat> and you really don't need to stop to see if there's a heartbeat. If you want to, you can lay your hand right over the heart where I am, and if your dog is not too fat, you'll be able to feel the heart or the place that we take a pulse in a dog is their femoral. So right in their groin, when you rub your finger here on the inside of their leg, you'll feel a cord. That's their femoral artery and vein. So you can take a pulse there. Wrigley's got a good healthy pulse. But if you were to do compressions on him, a medium sized to large breed dog, you're gonna be on your hands and knees or on your knees. You're going to put your hands together you're gonna go roughly for a big dog in the middle of the chest, which means you're not necessarily going over the heart. You're gonna go over the heart for a deep chested dog, like a Greyhound, a standard poodle, some German short hairs, but your for typical labs, German shepherds, Rottweilers, you're gonna go just in the middle of the chest. You're gonna lock your elbows, and I'm not gonna do it. Um, I'm just gonna do it in front of them. You are gonna hinge with your hips. You're not gonna move your hands, this is no. You're gonna move your whole body. So if you've got a cat or a little chihuahua, something small, you can actually wrap your whole hand around and just pump with your hands. If you have a bulldog, um, a Boston Terrier, anything that is wider than they are deep, you actually will roll them onto their back and do compressions this way. Same concept though, more like a person. So I know you're wondering, how much compression do you need to give? How, how hard do you go down? You wanna go down one third to one half the thickness of the chest. And honestly, that's not hard to do. I'm going down about a quarter of the way there. The ribs are flexible. And I know you're also wondering, how many compressions do I do? You're gonna to wanna to do 80 to 120 beats per minute. And just like in people, we like to find a song that works. For animals, we do the Bee Gees Staying Alive. <laughs> I hate to sing it for you because you guys <laughs> will be forever traumatized. Um, but you know that song. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. That's how many compressions. Ah, 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 staying alive, <laughs> staying alive. Um, so that's how many times you're going to go. Now, if you feel comfortable giving a breath to your dog, I'm going to show you how to do it. If you don't feel comfortable, don't. Um, most of us have been kissed by our dogs and we've kissed our dogs, so it's not a big deal. So it's not going to be mouth to mouth. It's going to be mouth to nose. So the first thing you have to do is create a seal. So I recommend pulling the cheeks down over the lips, shutting and then holding your hand so you've created a seal 
and then you put your entire mouth, which I'm not gonna do, <laughs> around the nose, like that. Oh, Wrigley, <laughs> you're such a good boy, sedated. Um, so you are gonna do two breaths for every 80 compressions. Now, if you lose count, that's fine. Estimate, two breaths, 80 compressions. If you have a helper, if you have someone with you and you can do the compressions and they can do the breathing, then it's one breath every 30 compressions. So the other thing that I should mention is if you live two blocks from a vet clinic, put your dog in the car and go. You know, if you're 20 minutes from a vet clinic, you should probably try this. If you have a minivan like I do, you could be in the back in your minivan doing this while someone else drives you there. The other thing I should mention is if you find your dog unconscious, this sounds like a no-brainer, before you start anything, holler for help. If someone's outside mowing the lawn, it's going to be much better to have a person here to help you or a person to call um, and tell a vet clinic you're coming while you're doing the compressions. So if there's someone around, find help before you start your, your CPR. So it's a long shot, <laughs> um, but we have heard of people that have saved their dogs with CPR. And we've also heard of people that have removed toys and balls and things, sticks out of their dog's throat um, and they weren't breathing. But as soon as they were able to pull that tongue, sweep something out, it saved their, dog li their dog's life. Um, the last thing I should mention is Every two, every two to three minutes, stop and check to see if a heart rate has started or watch and see if the dog is starting to breathe on their own. You know, at some point you have to see if what you're doing is working. If it's not working, a couple things are going to happen. You can kind of flick your dog's eyelids and they'll be completely wide open. Their eyes will be fully dilated. Their tongue will start to not be pink. <laughs> Wrigley's got a nice pink tongue, um, but they get kind of a purpley blue, and um, you just kind of know. So I hope you never need this information ever, um, but if you do, um, I think it's worth trying to save your dog's life. At least you'll know you've tried, even if it doesn't work.